United States of America, USA has vetoed for the third time a United Nations resolution demanding immediate ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas ongoing war in the Gaza city of Palestine. The United States vetoed the Arab-backed UN resolution proposed by Algeria on Tuesday. Alternatively, the United States proposed a draft United Nations Security Council resolution calling for a temporary ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war. The U.S. had put forward the text after Algeria requested the Council vote on its draft resolution. According to AP, the vote in the 15-member Security Council was 13 to 1 with the United Kingdom abstaining, reflecting the wide global support for ending the more than four-month war that started with Hamas' surprise invasion of southern Israel that killed about 1,200 people and saw 250 others taking hostage. Since then, more than 29,000 Palestinians have been killed in Israel's military offensive according to the Gaza Health Ministry, which doesn't distinguish between civilians and combatants but says the majority are women and children. It would be recalled the Tuesday rejection of another immediate ceasefire resolution in the ongoing war was the third U.S. veto of a Security Council resolution demanding a ceasefire in Gaza. Meanwhile, there are reports indicating that the United States, Israel's top ally, is working with mediators, Egypt and Qatar to try to broker another ceasefire and hostage release agreement. This as Israel military ordered new evacuations from parts of Gaza City on Tuesday. A study led by the UN Children's Agency found that one in six children are acutely malnourished in the isolated and largely devastated northern territory of Gaza. Hamas top political leader, Ismail Haniyeh was in Cairo to meet with Egyptian officials on Tuesday as part of plans to broker another ceasefire, but the meeting reportedly held with no expectation of a breakthrough. Just as Israeli military ordered the evacuation of the Zaitoun and Tokoman neighborhoods on the southern edge of Gaza City. The evacuation order suggests that the Palestinian fighters may still be putting up stiff resistance in areas of northern Gaza that the Israeli military said had been largely cleared weeks ago. In a AP report, residents said there have been airstrikes and heavy ground fighting in eastern parts of Gaza City over the past two days. This situation is very difficult, said Eman Abu Awad, who lives in Zaitoun. We are trapped inside our homes. The Global Nutrition Cluster, an ad partnership led by UNICEF, had issued a report and said that more than 90% of children under 5 in Gaza eat two or fewer food groups a day. The report described the situation in the area as severe food poverty. Adding that a similar percentage are affected by infectious diseases, with 70% experiencing diarrhea in the last two weeks. More than 80% of homes lack clean and safe water, with the average household having one liter quart per person per day, according to the report released Monday by the UNICEF-led Global Nutrition Cluster study on the situation in Gaza. Accordingly, the report indicated further that in the Gaza's southernmost city of Rafah, where most humanitarian aid are taken to, the acute malnutrition rate is 5%, compared to 15% in northern Gaza, which has been isolated by the Israeli military and largely cut off from it for months. Before the world, the rate across Gaza was less than 1%, the report said. The Gaza Strip is poised to witness an explosion in preventable child deaths, which would compound the already unbearable level of child deaths in Gaza, UNICEF official Ted Chiban said in a statement. United Nations reports had in December 2023 found that Gaza's entire population of 2.3 million. Palestinians is in a food crisis, with a quarter of the population facing starvation and severe hunger. A video posted online on Tuesday, children in Gaza were seen gathering floor from the ground and stuffing it in their pockets. The World Food Programme, WFP, had called for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire, opening of all crossings and the resumption of commercial cargo. Palestinian girl in another video broke down in tears over what she described as missing bread and everything else. We are missing everything. We miss white bread. Palestinian journalist Mohammed Shahin interviewed the young girl in Gaza, who broke down in tears after he asked her why she was angry. The young girl said that her father had been killed and that she is missing white bread and everything else in her life. According to the IPC Farming Review, an estimated 90% of Palestinians in Gaza, more than 2 million people, are facing acute food insecurity.
In a related development, Israeli police were seen in a video grappling with protesters marching to the house of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to demand a deal to free 134 captives held in Gaza. CNN in its report of U.S. a rejection of Algeria's proposed ceasefire resolution in the ongoing war indicated that attention will now turn to the progress of the American draft resolution, which falls short of the wishes of most other Security Council members but nonetheless highlights a hardening in the White House's stance on the conflict. Linda Thomas Greenfield, the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., told the Security Council that the Algeria proposed resolution would negatively impact sensitive negotiations ongoing in the region. Proceeding with a vote today was wishful and irresponsible, and so while we cannot support a resolution that would put sensitive negotiations in jeopardy, we look forward to engaging on a text that we believe will address so many of the concerns we all share, she said after the vote. Algeria's resolution, while doomed to ultimately fail, served to highlight the increasingly widespread global concern about the tenor of the Israel Defense Forces IDF, as ground and bombing campaign in Gaza. Palestinian Ambassador Riyad Mansour at the meeting decried the United States' veto of the UN ceasefire resolution. The message given today to Israel with this veto is that it can continue to get away with murder. Israel cannot and should not and will not get away with it, Manso said in quotes. And so I reiterate the United States' belief that while numerous parties engage in sensitive negotiations, this is not the time for this resolution, which jeopardizes these efforts. Colleagues, I communicated our concerns publicly and privately over the last several weeks. We've submitted numerous rounds of edits. All were ignored. And so for that reason, the United States has offered an alternative resolution that would do what this text does not. Pressure Hamas to take the hostage deal that is on the table and help secure a pause that allows humanitarian assistance to reach Palestinian civilians in desperate need. Again, there is much more we all agree on, and the alternative resolution put forward by the United States is rooted in those shared beliefs. The message given today to Israel with this veto is that it can continue to get away with murder. Israel cannot and should not and will not get away with it. We will not allow it. This veto does not absolve Israel of its obligations nor of those who shield it. Not here in the Security Council, not in the, in the ICJ, and not anywhere. Even if the Security Council continues to share its responsibilities to be obstructed by the veto of a permanent member over and over, the other organs of the international system are upholding their responsibilities. And one day or another, Palestinian children will not be viewed as a demography threat but as children with a right to life and to fulfill their hopes and dreams.